OK, bonjour. Merci d'être venu. So, uh, <coughs> last time we uh, discussed uh, some rules. So, some rules are very important. Uh, exact results that we know in many body system. And one of the important sum rules that we said is this uh, sum rule right there, which is the <coughs> F sum rule. It was uh, basically uh, based only on the canonical commutation relation between momentum and, and position. So, uh, and we said a general way of the, deriving these sum rules over countable prime and it can be translated in uh, also sometimes in some rules over the uh, spectral the um, fluctuations. So uh, before I start, do you have some questions on the last class? Okay, so the objective uh, today uh, is to uh, derive these formulas that are known as uh, Kubo formula. So uh, they, are, they come when we look at the response uh, to the electromagnetic field. So in particular, uh, uh, it, could be, it will be the optical conductivity that we can measure with the infrared spectroscopy or DC conductivity, uh, which is just a limit uh, omega goes to zero. So all microscopic calculations are based on, uh, are based on this for these, uh, these, these uh, important quantities. And that, that will be, the, these phi and A will be an example of what I meant by this classical field that I call little a, that was coupled to, uh, to matter. <clears throat> so uh, the, uh, the first thing that uh, uh, comes to mind here is that uh, this looks a little bit uh, strange because we know that uh, what is what is uh, physical is the electric field, for example, here, or the magnetic field, not the scalar potential or the vector potential. So the first part of the class, I'll talk about coupling to the electromagnetic field and uh, in general. And then I compute the response. Once we have done that, it will be easy, given all that we know, to compute the response to, uh, to scalar and vector potential. And I will rewrite this in terms of electric field. So this is delta J, I will, the, the current. I will rewrite it in terms of the response to the electric field uh, by uh, using the epsilon rule uh, and current conservation. Okay, so that's the plan. So before we talk about coupling to the electromagnetic field, let me just uh, uh, remind you that uh, we uh, define the magnetic field B as the curl of the uh, vector potential and the electric field the E as uh, the time derivative of the vector potential minus the gradient of the scalar potential. And the reason we do this is that we automatically have two equations uh, of Maxwell's equations that are satisfied. The divergence of the magnetic field is, is uh, zero because the divergence of a curl is zero. And um, Faraday's equation, the curl of the electric field is equal to minus dB dt. And I use SI units, so international Okay. <clears throat> so uh, now uh, there's an ambiguity in defining uh, A and, and phi because if I change A uh, equals uh, A, so I take A prime equals A plus uh, the gradient of some scalar function, la uh, let me call it capital lambda. And if I define the phi, pri phi prime uh, uh, whoops, equals to phi minus the uh, time derivative, partial time derivative of lambda, uh, then you see that uh, 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 clearly this equation is not modified because uh, the curl of a gradient is zero. 
And uh, this equation uh, this equation gives the same electric field because these two uh, things cancel out. Okay. So we have to couple the electromagnetic field to uh, matter in a gauge invariant way, in other words, in a way that is independent of this. So let me first give you the answer, and then we'll try to justify it a little bit by using some arguments that I, I found in David's initial notes. <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> the way to couple in a gauge invariant way is uh, to replace the uh, operator h bar over i gradient uh, by h bar over i gradient and minus the charge of the particle times the vector potential. So evaluated at the position of the particle. So let me let me put an index uh, alpha uh, to decide which particle we are talking about. So alpha is not the coordinate; is not the coordinate. The projection of the vector on the coordinate alpha is, is just the position of the particle alpha in, in some coordinate. And uh, i h bar d d t uh, will become uh, I h bar d dt minus e phi of our alpha. Okay. <clears throat> now I, I, I uh, okay. I will do some uh, an aside to uh, justify this, but uh, before I do that, I just want to make uh, two general comments. One is that you will start you will start to see that the notes become very dense. I mean, there are lots of remarks and, and things like that. So the remarks are, are helpful once you read the, you've read the, these notes one time, two times, or three times. There are many in the remarks. Usually, there are lots of subtleties. So if you try to understand all the remarks and all their details in the first reading, it's a tough job. Okay, so don't feel you have to do this. Okay, so that's the first remark. So you, you just try to redo in, in the notes that you give every after every lecture, you just try to redo what I did, uh, what I do uh, during the lecture. Uh, the second remark is that what I'm going to do right now, you don't need to, I mean, uh, you, you, if you're curious, you can, you can rederive this, but uh, it's not uh, necessary. This is just uh, an aside in some way. Okay, so how do we couple? What, what, what's the justification for coupling the electromagnetic field to matter this way? Okay, what the justification is that we want an action that couples uh, matter, electromagnetic field with matter in a way that is both Lorentz and gauge invariant. So if we write it uh, like this, so integral of uh, a mu dr mu in the usual notation for relativity, the relativity. So that's the contravi contravariant vector r mu is equal to ct times uh, r. No, I don't put the index for the particle. And uh, a mu is the covariant uh, vector minus phi over c times a, no, not times, <laughs> and, and a, that's ridiculous. So, <clears throat> so this is clearly Lorentz uh, invariant. Why is it gauge invariant? Let me do this gauge transformation. Then this gauge transformation is a mu plus d mu uh, lambda. So I have added this term to the to the action. So let's let's rewrite uh, this extra term. So this extra term integral d mu lambda dr mu is equal to the integral uh, 
d mu lambda d r mu dt times dt where now this is a total derivative so we follow the particle the position changes and the time changes so that's the that's the uh, total derivative with respect to time and what is this this is just the integral of uh, d lambda dt total time derivative times dt so it means that I've changed the Lagrangian. The Lag so the Lagrangian, the action is the integral of the Lagrangian over time. So I've changed the Lagrangian uh, by this, and changing the Lagrangian by a const uh, by a, a time derivative uh, does not uh, change the equations of motion. Because why? Because you remember in the action you need to fix what happens at the initial and the final time. Okay, so that's why the, this is a coupling in the in the in a gauge uh, invariant way. Now I'm skipping I'm skipping details. I'm just uh, uh, giving you uh, uh, giving you answer here. So <clears throat> if you do this, what will the Lagrangian uh, look like? So the Lagrangian for one particle will be uh, in the one half m uh, v square minus e times uh, the scalar potential uh, minus uh, the uh, vector potential times the velocity. <clears throat> now, if you use this Lagrangian and you write the equations of motion using Euler's equation of motion, you, you recover the usual equation, uh, uh, the Lorentz equations of motion, okay, that m dv dt is uh, charge times electric field plus a charge times v cross d. And if you write the, the Hamiltonian h as uh, p dot v minus l, then you find that it's equal to m v square over <clears throat> over two uh, plus p five, but now I have not defined p yet. Okay. So what is p? As usual, p. Let's say uh, in direction uh, x is equal to the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the velocity velocity is time derivative of the position in the direction uh, x, okay, dl dv x. So if we, if we uh, do this, you see that we find that the px is equal to <coughs> uh, m uh, v uh, plus e times uh, a in the x direction, sorry. So now how do we go from classical to uh, quantum mechanics? We replace a uh, Poisson, uh, uh, Poisson brackets, the crochet Poisson, by uh, commutators. Or if you want, uh, Px uh, in quantum mechanics becomes h bar over i grad x. So that's the, uh, that is the uh, if you want the translationally invariant expression for the operator that is a, a conjugate moment that is conjugate to position, right? Because the moment conjugate to position is dl dr dot is is a p. So what do we find then?
we see we find that the MVX is equal to PX, which is this, it's uh, H bar over I grad when this is operator now, X minus E AX. Okay, so that's what I did here. Okay. And then when you write the Schrodinger's equation of motion, I H bar D DT is equal to H, uh, H uh, D DT on Psi equal to H Psi, you find that uh, this is how you have to change uh, IH bar DDT. And that's very natural because if you go to, uh, again, a relativistically invariant, uh, you could, if you go to the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the relativist, uh, relativistic notation, you find that uh, this is uh, exactly what you, uh, what you expect. So this is called the covariant derivative. Okay, I know that what I've done here is very fast and uh, you may not remember uh, where it comes from. So it may not be very useful. I just want you to know this, okay? You don't need to really write this, although I find this quite interesting. This is a star uh, section in the notes that I've uh, stolen from David Senechal. <coughs> And you can read the, whoops, you can read it if you want. So to couple the electromagnetic field to matter, we just need to focus on the kinetic energy term, right? The, uh, the potential part does not uh, come in. But I have an important, uh, uh, a few important remarks to uh, to make, which is let's write <coughs> let's write the equations of motion now for <coughs> let's write the Schrodinger's equation. So so I have uh, I H bar d dt minus e phi. So e is the charge of the particle. It can be positive or negative. Acting on psi is equal to uh, one over two m <clears throat> h bar over i uh, grad for um, minus e a square psi, okay? Now God knows what, the, what is the, <laughs> what is the gauge I'm working in. So, so suppose I, I change the gauge, okay? So if I change the gauge, I, I change uh, Schrodinger's equation. It becomes minus DDT minus E phi and I use this, so it's plus uh, d lambda dt times psi prime. It's a new, I mean, it would be a new wave function because I'm doing, a, uh, the equation is different. So it has to be a new wave function. 2m h bar over i grad minus e a, and now I'm you I'm do you do using I'm using the minus I'm using this so it's minus e uh, grad lambda acting on psi prime. Okay, so. Uh, so when I compute psi prime, I will get a different psi prime. Okay, it will be different from, from psi. But uh, there are several co constraints, like so suppose I'm looking at eigenstates, right? I Energy eigenstates. Suppose I'm looking at energy eigenstates. 
then the energy uh, here and the energy the, there, they have to be the same, right? Which means that the, uh, I, I need to do something if I want the energy to be, uh, to be the same. <clears throat> okay, so not only the energy, but all the observable have to be unchanged when I change, when I compute expectation values with Psi or with Psi prime, the observables have to be the same. <clears throat> so uh, what is the relation between Psi prime and Psi? We don't even need to solve the equation to know this relation, you see? If I write that Psi prime is equal to E to the I times the charge times Lambda over H bar times uh, Psi, <clears throat> then you see that uh, this lower equation for Psi prime goes to the upper one for Psi, right? Because if I substitute this here, you see that when I H bar DDT acts on this, it will give me E or the H bar will drop out. The I uh, will, uh, will give a minus sign. Am I doing this correctly? I think so, I E. <clears throat> so uh, if psi prime is equal to this, I need to commute the derivative with respect to time here with this guy to recover the equation for, uh, for Psi. Okay. So now I have doubts, I don't know about the sign here. Ça a l'air de marcher, I fois I c'est moins 1, donc on a moins et plus. Okay, moins et plus, okay. So sorry, uh, I got some, <laughs> uh, some, uh, my brain stopped working at some point. Okay. So you see, you cancel the, and the same thing here. Okay, so you have the, the I cancels and you have the plus gradient and then it drops out. So it means that when I solve this, equ this equation, I will get a result different from the Psi I had, but the relation is very simple, it would be this. So now what happens when I compute the observables? Okay, so suppose I, I want to compute uh, uh, the expectation value of the potential energy. Then I will put uh, Psi prime of R, V of R, Psi of R, okay, prime. And here it's a uh, star. So you see what will happen is that the phase will disappear, okay? So, so this is fine. But now what I want, what happens if I want to compute the expectation value of the current or of the, of the kinetic energy? Uh, excuse me. Yes. Is please. the term in parentheses uh, on the right hand side of the second equation? Yeah, is it a square? Yes, yes. Sorry, thank you. Cool. So what happens if I want to compute uh, the expectation value of H bar over I grad uh, uh, grad? Then I'm in big trouble, okay? So what does it mean? It means that this conjugate moment is not an observable. Remember in the Hamiltonian, this, this object here, grad minus EA, that's the velocity. So velocity I can observe. So it means that if I want to if I want to measure, to compute velocity, then what I have to do is to compute h bar over i grad minus e a times uh, psi prime of r. And here I need a prime, okay? And I need to work in the same gauge, a prime being 
the prime being this. Okay? Now, when I do this uh, change here, and then this will uh, be gauge invariant. So th this operator comes out from the uh, from the from the formalism as the conjugate moment, but the conjugate moment is not an observable. It's the velocity is. Now the, the other thing that you will see very often, and I forgot to mention before I erase the everything. Okay, this I need to keep. <clears throat> Is that uh, oh, okay. too bad? I I was too quick on erasing, even though it's very long to erase here. So I wrote that the remember the Lagrangian was uh, one f m v square minus e times phi minus uh, v dot a. So what is the current? <clears throat> the velocity, the current. Is equal to. The velocity or the current is equal to the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to. So uh, let me do this by com the components. So V x d a x. When I keep the position r and uh, r dot constant. What about the charge here? Uh, and yes, so I need the charge. So that's the current. The charge is very important because it's... <laughs> so now if I... If I go to the Hamiltonian, so what is the Hamiltonian? The Hamiltonian L, uh, H is P dot uh, V minus uh, L, which means that uh, the current EVX, when I go to Hamiltonian formalism, is equal to minus the derivative of h with respect to a when I keep p and r constant. So this is the analog of uh, of what you see. This is, so this is a Legendre transform. So that's the analog of what you see in uh, thermodynamics, where the pressure is the derivative, this is not momentum, this is pressure now, is derivative of the free energy with respect to volume, if you keep temperature constant with a minus sign. And it's equal to the derivative of the energy with respect to volume, if you keep entropy constant, okay, and, and energy and free energy are related by a Legendre transformation. So this is the same thing. Right? So this formula for current minus the derivative of h with respect to a, you will see very often in the literature. So that's the way to uh, 
uh, to find the uh, the current. But again, all of this, I mean, you don't need to you don't need to go through all of this uh, in detail. Uh, we we will proceed differently, but you will see at the end that the current will it will be could have been obtained just from a derivative of the the Hamiltonian. Okay, so now uh, we see how the, uh, if I want to use my formalism that I have used from the beginning, uh, then I need to write the coupling of the current to the electromagnetic field uh, as a minus integral d q bar g of r dot a of r and t. Okay, let's start from this then. And let me write P for this uh, H bar over I grab. So the, the Hamiltonian now is one over two M and I will sum over particles alpha, uh, P alpha minus E A at the position R alpha of the particle and at time T square. Okay. Let me focus on this first. Okay, now we can, we can, I need some space. So what I will do now is just uh, expand this and write the result like this. So I write this as equal to one over two M sum over alpha. Okay, so there's, there's a P alpha square. And then I have a plus or minus <coughs> integral D cube R of uh, 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 one over two M also. Of uh, delta of r minus r alpha times uh, p alpha plus p alpha delta of r minus r alpha. <coughs> times A alpha is the particle, remember here. So A of R and T. Okay, so I, I think I've, I've used just a linear term for now, okay? Now you see that uh, A is now a number. That's the external field. So I have to put it when I take the square, it has to be either to the left or to the right of the of p alpha because r and p don't commute. So that's why the delta function is on the right or on the left here. Okay. 
So I have an expression for the current down there. If, if I want to write it this way, you see the current is just what is in brackets here. Okay. <clears throat> but now there's an additional term to the current because I want a gauge invariant current. So I cannot leave these P alpha here. Okay. I have to add uh, the minus, I have to add minus A alpha. So the current here is a function of the vector potential. J is a function of the vector potential. <clears throat> because when I add this part that depends on A, I will get some uh, A square here. And that's the A square that comes, that is, uh, that's right, that's here. Or if you want another way to, um, and it, the best way to see it perhaps is to write that the current uh, J that depends on vector potential is the derivative of H with respect to A. So when I take the derivative of H with respect to A, this, there's this term here, but there's also a term that comes from the derivative of A squared. Okay, so uh, uh, J uh, J A of R is G of R, where, where G of R is this this thing in brackets here. Uh, minus uh, rho of R A of R and T in such a way that if I do the integral, I will do this now, the integral d cube R, of, what is rho of R? That's the charge. So it's sum over alpha times the charge times delta of R minus R alpha times uh, A of R and T. So when I do the integral d cube R <coughs> with R alpha, then, then this, uh, this gives me uh, the charge times the vector potential, which is this term that if you want that I add to the expression for the current. When I replace the P by P minus EA, minus E8, then there, there's this uh, extra term that, that, uh, that comes here. <clears throat> or How can you add minus E8 when you, you've already done it in the expression before? I don't. Uh, I have already done it uh, 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 here, but the, the point is that this is the paramagnetic current. If I want the full gauge invariant current, here, I need, uh, I need, so this J here is this piece. That's called a paramagnetic current. So that paramagnetic current is not gauge invariant. Okay. But this one here, when I take derivative of H with respect to A is gauge invariant. Or another way to see, to see it is take the paramagnetic current and do the uh, it's called minimal coupling. When I replace P by P minus E8, it's called minimal coupling. So replace P minus uh, P by P minus E8 in the current operator. Okay, so we use two times the minimal coupling. Pardon me? So we use two times the minimal coupling. One uh, in the first uh, line and then yes. in order to derive yes. the rule. Yes, okay. right. I, I use it twice, yes. Or if you don't, if you're uncomfortable to using it twice, just use this expression. All right, okay. Okay, and then it comes out this way. Okay, so uh, we're basically uh, 
we've uh, achieved our goal now because if if this is the coupling of the electromagnetic field with the matter. If I look at linear response, then I know that the, uh, the J will be the susceptibility, the eighth component of uh, J. Now this is not the particle number, that's the component. Perhaps I should not put a vector here, that would be more reasonable. So J A A is the is, is J A times J B times A B. Okay, where this J here is the paramagnetic current. This is the expression that is here in brackets. Okay, that's the paramagnetic current. That's a linear response. But I need to subtract uh, this piece. So because it's already first order in A. Okay, so this term here, is already first order in A. So this is uh, uh, what I get here. And here I made a mistake, I think, uh, because there's a mass here, so I forgot the mass. Okay, so that's called the paramagnetic current and that's called the diamagnetic current. And it, so this has to be computed to linear order and, and the other one has, is, is, was already, I can compute to zero to order because the, in the current operator, it comes already uh, linear in A. And then what happens to the, uh, to the scalar potential? And the scalar potential, I have to put it on the right-hand side. And the scalar potential was coupled to density. So I, I have density, I have current here that is still there, JA. Then I have density that's coupled to phi and there's a minus sign because there were, I had minus E phi on the left that go to plus E phi on the right. Okay, so I've derived this equation. Now, suppose I want just the transverse response. What do I mean by transverse? I explained a little bit last time, but let me repeat it. So the, so the transverse response is, uh, means that the, the vector potential is, uh, has no, uh, no longitudinal uh, Part, which means it has no piece. So if I go to Fourier space, A, E to the I, Q dot R, A, that's a, just a number here, <coughs> but it's a, it's a vector, it has a direction. If I take <coughs> the gradient <coughs> of the uh, uh, the divergence of this, I'm sorry. Then this is a Q uh, dot A times I times E to the I Q dot R. So I take this to be equal to, uh, to zero. <clears throat> so A is, a, is purely a transverse, which means that if uh, Q is in some direction X, A is in the direction Y. So A is some amplitude times uh, direction Y. Okay, they are perpendicular. The vector is varies in a direction that's perpendicular uh, to Q. I'm sorry, the vector is in a direction that is perpendicular to its variation. 
So an example is this. Okay, so the vector is in this direction, but it varies in this, in this direction. So that's exactly what happens with the magnetic field. Okay, Q is in the direction that is, uh, that is, uh, a, 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 that is perpendicular to, to A. You see the magnetic field, if, if, if A is expressed in Fourier components, then the, uh, the Q that comes in A has to be perpendicular to the direction of A, otherwise the magnetic field is different, from, is equal to zero. So if I couple a transverse uh, vector potential, in other words, for example, a magnetic field to a current, then this object here is gauge invariant by construction, okay? In the sense that uh, <coughs> if I do, uh, if I take the, the, the divergence of, uh, of A, it's equal to it's equal to zero. So when I do a gauge transformation, a gauge transformation, I, I erased it, but the gauge transformation is always longitudinal, okay? Because it adds a gradient of a function to A. A gauge transformation is always longitudinal. So this this way it's it's uh, it's gauge invariant for the transverse response. Okay, what about the longitudinal response? Hmm. Then the longitudinal response, in other words, if you look at the components of A uh, that are along Q, uh, then that, that doesn't look uh, anything like a gauge invariant. <clears throat> Using again uh, our F sum rule, which is a consequence of the canonical commutation relation and charge conservation, I can rewrite it in a gauge invariant way. And that's rather uh, fundamental, right? That uh, using a Noether's theorem, uh, gauge invariance is related to uh, charge conservation. So first of all, let's ask how the electric field is related E of Q and omega. <clears throat> How is it uh, related to, uh, uh, to scalar and vector potential? So it's really, so I need to do integral dQ R dT e to the i omega plus i eta t minus i q dot r <coughs> times minus d a d t minus gradient of pi. Okay, so the plus i eta is necessary because you can think of it either from adiabatically switching on or from the fact that uh, we always take time for it transforms that way to ensure causality. So if we integrate by parts, then you see that uh, E of the Q and omega is i omega plus i eta times uh, vector potential of q and omega <coughs> minus i q uh, x times the phi of q. Now you don't see anymore. Sorry. Okay. 
So here, what I will do is uh, uh, divide by minus IQX. So I get a plus now, and I get uh, IQX here. And I need to multiply by, if I, if I, I divide here because I, I want to multiply uh, this uh, IQX. So this will look like uh, uh, the response to some electric field. And uh, here, I want to uh, 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 multiply and divide by omega i omega plus i eta. So you see when I combine <clears throat> why is the uh, on the very last uh, part of the equation you wrote um, why is the high in the because it's a mistake okay thank you So you see what I wrote here? So if I was in a gauge where the gradient was zero, the gradient of phi was zero, that would be the response to the electric field, what I circled in red here. Okay, that's what I wrote here. So in a gauge where I have only the vector potential, this is theory, theory the electric field. Now what I have to show is that, uh, is that this quantity is equal to the other one in red. Uh, I have a minus sign here, so. Yeah, you just uh, raised the minus sign uh, as an error. If I erase the minus sign here, and I will put uh, the uh, minus sign here, right? So minus, minus. Uh, so I, I need a minus there, right? So is it okay? So the, so this minus IQ yeah. X is the electric field. And I have an overall minus sign because I have minus, minus, minus. Okay. Now I can put plus, plus. <laughs> so if I can show that this thing in, in red is equal to this, uh, the same thing, then I'm, I'm done. And clearly I don't have time. So I will show you the, the trick and then we'll ask you to finish it as part of the notes that you're, uh, you're giving to me. And uh, okay, so let me give you the tricks. So, uh, so here it's now plus. So, uh, so the trick is to do this. I do I omega plus I eta divided by I omega plus I eta times uh, IQX divided by IQX. No, IQX is already there. I don't need to multiply by IQX. One over IQX. So I have this times this times chi of zero, which is integral d omega prime over pi of uh, chi double prime of uh, j, 
in the a direction times the density of uh, q and uh, omega prime divided by omega prime minus omega plus i eta. Okay, so this sky retarded is just what I wrote here. Okay, now this omega, this one over i omega plus i eta, I need it here, but this one I can take it inside. So I have uh, I omega plus uh, I eta, and then I can do minus I omega prime plus I omega prime, okay? Here I have done nothing, uh, sorry. I have added zero. <clears throat> Yes. So the first, uh, in the first, the, you see, this will allow me, this here will allow me to simplify this denominator. And uh, what I will do then is use current conservation. So current conservation is that the derivative of rho with respect to temperature or to time, what am I doing? <laughs> is minus the divergence of the current. So in frequency, it means that omega prime times rho is equal to q dot uh, j. Okay. <clears throat> Which means that uh, I can, I can, uh, uh, use here uh, that uh, that uh, j. So I'm looking at the longitudinal response now. So I can use that uh, j is equal to omega prime rho divided by q. And if I'm looking at the x direction, that's in the x direction. So if I replace uh, j by this omega prime rho over qx. Okay, I have a qx square. I can use the epsilon rule. So the q will disappear. Q square will disappear. And uh, that will give me uh, this piece that I'm looking for. And then the other piece, which is i omega prime times this, I will uh, use the fact that omega prime acting on rho, omega prime acting on rho is j divided by q. And I will use again the, uh, uh, the f sum rule. Uh, no, and, and then the, uh, that will be it. I mean, I will add uh, jj. Okay, and I'm, I'm, I can sort of uh, do, use uh, this because this is a commutator. There's no theta function, uh, no no MSI function, so I don't need to worry about taking derivative of a MSI function. Okay, so it's already finished. So, okay, you can you can look at the proof that's in the notes. In the notes, it's done in real time. Uh, here we do everything in the, in frequency and momentum, but you can show that this is equal to this. Or you can also show these things by using gauge invariance. But here I don't want to use gauge invariance because we've already used it enough. I just want to show that current conservation and the epsilon rule imply that I can rewrite the whole thing like this. Or I could, if you want, write it in terms of uh, the uh, current density divided by Q <clears throat> by doing things backwards. So the, the longitudinal direction, there are two ways of writing the response. But in the transverse direction, there's only this way. Okay. Any question? Okay, that was a little bit heavy today, I know, but uh, 
Okay, next time we will start from this. Okay. Okay, thank you. If you want to stay, I will stop recording. If you want to stay for questions, you're welcome.